Hello guys, and today I will participate in the title Tuesday. It's uh, seven minutes left before the start of the tournament. Hopefully, um, hopefully it will be better with uh, microphone today. I just changed it to my webcam uh, microphone. So at least it shouldn't be noisy. So waiting for the start of the tournament, five minutes left. At the moment there are 300, 300 participants with Hikaru. Uh, who are the top guys? Hikaru, Jabawa, Naraditsky, Bortnik, Andrejkin, Ditch. Sarana, minutes left I see that Firuja has joined it.
Hello, hello. How is the sound? Better? Uh, this is a webcam microphone. At least when I was trying it for recording, it was it was okay. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Uh, Thirty seconds left. Twenty seconds left already. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what was it, uh, either problem with microphone or something else uh, with that one. So, so I will try to work with, with this one. And it's time to start. So the first round, candidate master from the United States. Yeah, the only thing that I turned off sounds, so you will not hear moves. I also don't hear it, so just play like it is, and that's it. So, by the way, how about arrows? Oh, still no. Oh, okay, arrows. They fixed it, so errors work. Yeah. Here it's an interesting question. Sounds should I play Bishop D seven or not? Play bishop d7, then knight e5, bishop b5, queen f3. So I got a typical, typical structure for this opening line and this pawn structure is already better for black. It's a bit hard to explain 
why, but uh, usually when I try to explain, it's about having this pawn on c5, while so this pawn controls uh, the d4 square, while e6 pawn is kind of equal to d3 pawn. So the good question if it's a blunder or not really. I mean, what about c2 pawn? I guess it's a blunder. So e6 and d3 pawns, as I said, they are kind of equal to each other. Why? While well, thanks to c to the c5 pawn, uh, I control the central d4 square. Maybe taking on e3 was a, like, it definitely was okay, but I decided that better to leave my knight on d4. And so leaving white with this weakness on d3. And now the, the idea is to trade the queens. White has no way to escape if queen g4 then just f5. So in fact he needs to take on d5. And if he needs to take on d5 then his position is just technically lost now. I mean it was it was lost before as well, but uh, the difference is that here there are no queens on the board, so no real counterplay by him. I don't want to play cd4 since then rook c1. Why not to take on F2?
no respect at all. This cheap try with rook b4, it's like. My game was the last one, so this time I'm not gonna <laughs> analyze uh, the game since uh, yeah, in the previous tournament I lost uh, 40 seconds, uh, like gave it as handicap to Caruana. So I guess it's already should be a new game, maybe? No? not really maybe I had time to show you like I mean to explain you a few, few things but I think I think I explained it enough in that game since uh, why just uh, why just blunder it the pawn on c2 but before this blunder his position was uh, already worse uh, like it's a typical story for this pawn structure And the funny thing that uh, what I like about this opening line that my opponents they don't really understand that that they they position already worse. <laughs> hello, hello. So the last game left and then it will be the second round. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hello, powerful night on. If black takes on c3, then there is a typical story with bishop h7. And then taking his bishop on c3 or his knight. Okay, no, if he takes with the bishop on c3, then I play. Then I just take on c3 and queen c2 probably. Mm -hmm. An interesting try by him. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Except one thing. Not bad at all, except one thing, that d takes e4 is not possible, then queen b3 check. I mean knight f7, of course, after king h8, so I expect him to play f takes e5. But after f takes e5, it's still queen b3 using this, um, this pin. Don't want to remove the bishop, yes, so queen b3. If bishop is sick, then it's even queen takes b7, so it's nothing good for him at all. Mm. 
it's better to play something like King H8 or yeah, not not all, but what else? King H8, I guess. Anyway, he needs this move. Okay, a risky one, but let's play principal chess and of course taking the material. So now after d4, queen a8, the problem for him that there are two evacuation roads for my queen. One of them is taking the pawn on a7, another one taking the pawn on e4. So there is no chance of my queen being trapped. But what else can he do? Yeah, if knight a6 or knight c6, then I take, and also I attack the bishop on a6. If knight d7, then just bishop takes d5, bishop takes, queen takes d5, then d takes e5. Three pounds up. Three pounds. Three pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Poor guy, a poor guy, what to say? Okay, of course I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't relax too early. But the guy has no time and no position. I don't want him his queen attacking my pawn on the five, so that's why kicking away him. What should I do? Should I take on g6 or not? And there is no rush for me. There is no rush for me, I can... I have a lot of time, my friend, to finish you here. Maybe I can just take on before, of course, why not? But I don't want. I think I should trap his knight somehow. I don't understand why people don't resign. 
I thought this tournament called as title a Tuesday, not uh, Patser's Tuesday. So here CD5, ED5, Knight D5, this is what I knew. This is what I wrote in my book, this move Knight E5. Since in case of castle and then black could play bishop g4. So knight e5, knight e4, castles, my bishop takes. Yeah, maybe knight c3 was an option here. But of course knight c3, then just queen c2. This is actually a pawn sacrifice, so not... Not that simple, but white is better. And um, what he played, f6, just lost. Oh, yeah, I could I could have started with queen b3. <laughs> so bishop e4, if d4, then queen b3. King h8 and knight f7. Knight f7. And like f5, uh, queen b3. And like, in fact, white white is winning. So king h8, then no matter queen d5 or bishop takes d5, I have a bishop pair, I'm, uh, I, I'm a pawn up, maybe he will, he will get a chance to grab the pawn back, so that's why it was better to take with the bishop here. But okay, and later it was nothing really to look at, so let's yeah, let's move on. There are two games left in this round, so the next round will be next round will be quite soon. So 13 viewers, that's already better than the previous time. <laughs> I mean the previous time with the title it Tuesday. It was some something between 7 and 11 viewers. This tournament on chess.com Yeah, the screen is different here. Yeah, recently I get some problems with this line. It's somehow annoying. It's somehow annoying. Problem that black uh, black pawn structure is worse than white pawn structure, and uh, there are some annoying things. 
like white has an easy play and for black it's not that clear what to do since for example if I take on d4 then after cd4 white's pawn structure is uh, quite uh, quite solid so it's a good question what to do here and in case if you need to think what to do then it's something wrong with your opening uh, it's something wrong with your opening in in a blitz game since in a blitz game it's of course better not to think but uh, but just to play I just don't know what to do, so that's why I do something. <laughs> Usually in such a situation you just need to wait, like trying not to lose uh, in a stupid way. So for example c4 is something I'm, I'm okay with, I, I don't mind. At least I get uh, some play here. The only problem that uh, even if I get some play here, then it's still not really a position to play for a win. It's still, I guess it's still slightly worse. Maybe nothing really, maybe nothing worse really. Since what? I don't really have any problems. I would be happy to go for an endgame here. What if I take here?
seems like I'm winning now. It's fine. It's actually going quite well here in this tournament so far. So white position was good here, but uh, I don't like uh, C for move. Yeah, just as I said, uh, like knight d2 here, and I saw this move. It's plus two for white. Since actually by playing queen e7. After knight d2, I cannot uh, play bishop f5, then queen d5. But c4 is a mistake since black is limited with his uh, moves options. And after c4, it's it's a normal position, nothing, nothing, nothing bad anymore. And here it's just equal, but this is a blunder. Yeah, maybe I could play b6 or rook c8, the best move. Uh -huh. Not giving up that pawn, but I decided, okay, to do like this, and uh, eventually it was already time to press, since uh, how it usually happens, uh, in case if, uh, like, you don't score, then your opponent scores. Oh, yeah, this guy, I don't need to inter introduce you. And it seems like the opening preparation, Karana's preparation and Firuja preparation has to be improved. If he is surprised with the e5 move.
H6 was a bad move, really bad move. I had such a pleasant... Oh no, not bad move, not a bad move. Wait a sec. Actually bad. If bishop e2, then he could play h take g6. Shit, lucky loser. Maybe not really. This is, yeah, h6 then bishop d1. So everything was not that simple there. A blunder. Shit. Okay, let's try this. Stupid play. Just a stupid blunder and after f4, uh, rook h2 was good. Uh -huh, knight d5 here still with advantage. What to say? The guy is just weak. Yeah, like I didn't feel him. It was like a, like an experienced guy played black and uh, was playing black and uh, uh, the young beginner played with white. Now it will be a break. But one thing I can say for sure that today I play better than um, uh, 
the previous the, uh, the previous week and uh, Elsa what the Elsa I wanted to say yeah Elsa I wanted to say that you remember that uh, the last week my score was uh, something like I don't know three out of five or maybe four out of six but for sure I lost two games uh, somewhere in the beginning but then I still was uh, like somehow getting closer to the top so it's not time to it's not time to cry and meanwhile I will go to to make a tea so I will back I will be back soon uh, yeah maybe it will be a bit noisy sorry since
Yeah, but you forgot the best one. Seems like this time it will be harder since uh, there are 445 players here. I believe uh, previous week it was something like 300. And it's a typical story, uh, the more players we have, the higher we need to, to go to be on the top. I have applied to be, like, I did one more try to be on the streamers list of uh, chess.com, but at the moment, at the moment, it seems like at least they haven't responded yet. With liches, with liches, everything is fine. I'm already, I'm already there. But chess.com is annoying one. They don't want me yet. It's not exactly Makagonov, it's uh, something, um, um, let's say, a better version for white. Mm -hmm. Knight h5 is interesting, yeah, the idea is, uh, the idea is gh5, queen h4. So then let's try to do something extraordinary and castling long. Now it's quite complicated here. Black could uh, easily get a better position if he will be able to develop everything and uh, if he will have enough time. Well, my tea is just an ordinary one, uh, green tea. Knight d3 fighting for the e5 square. But somehow it feels that I'm like it's slowly, it's slowly becoming worse for me. Uh, but at least one important thing that you see this knight on h7 at the moment it's far from the e5 square. So let's say, let's imagine his. Ah, that's, that's maybe smart, maybe not really smart since I can do knight before the attacking his attacking his bishop since I guess the, the idea is bishop a6 but then I can go knight before then maybe knight c6 by the way by the way maybe e5 somewhere makes sense 
since all my pieces are well placed at the moment and uh, it's really hard to improve them. Knight b5 is also could be uh, knight b5 also could be an idea, but knight b5 I don't really think. What about e5? Let's let's check. I think it's not bad. We should go for that. Kind of not a surprise in me, this bishop a6. But what should I do? It's a really hard question to, to answer if should I take on d6 or e6. take and now which one to take mm, that's a good question maybe with the rook why not I wanted to play knight b5, but then I realized that there is queen d7 attacking my knight, and this is a stupid mistake. I did already uh, like a few moves ago, let's say, since I wanted to go for this position, but uh, unfortunately this position is not really... Uh, I mean, my plan was knight b5 and then d6, so that makes sense, but... Um, with, if I cannot play knight b5, then uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for this position. What a move. Is it is it legal to play strong like this? But maybe the move itself nothing good actually. <laughs> A tough win. Castling loan is fine. King v1 is good. Bishop g2 is okay. F4. 
four is good. Knight d3 is good, and actually white is like really better here. Rook h1 is good. e5 was also fine immediately. This is what I told you. Here e5 is the best move. This is exactly what I give in my in my course. Uh, like once all your pieces well placed, then you should go forward. So e5, e6 was slightly better, but e d6 it's fine. And here queen c4 was better, but queen d4 also fine. g5 is good, rook d1 is even better. Yeah, rook d1 is better, stopping him from doing that. And here it's still better for me, so actually I played uh, a decent game, queen f4 is the best move, and if knight g5 then I already go for knight b5 or maybe h4 first. But knight d3 of course is a bad move, <laughs> first I was <laughs> like, uh, first it was impressive, but then actually the, the idea is uh, quite cheap, rook d3, rook e1, but if queen g3 then uh, he needs to move it back and okay, here it's already uh, here it's already winning for me. Okay, thank you, see you next time. So a national master from the United States. Let's see if he has any preparation about against my tricky line. So the idea of queen b6 move is to weaken his queenside pawn structure, so once he castle, I am ready to attack him on the queen side. And with pawn on b2, it would be it would be harder for me to to reach his king. So the b3 pawn is a hook. And also c3 is uh, like a weak pawn now. Tough choice, either rook c8 or b4, but the problem is before that it's not winning immediately. Before knight e2, bc3, knight c3, and then bishop b4, there is bishop d4. <sighs> okay, let's play rook c8, maybe he will go b4, a mistake, not, not really. And let's still go for b4. If there is nothing better, hmm. 
I don't mind about c3. I mean, just any any move by the bishop then, bishop a3 or bishop e7. If b4, then a5, just smashing him. Yeah, but queen c1, of course, uh, doesn't look like a great idea. Let's just play a5. The idea is quite simple, just still opening up the position. A4 is coming. At some at some moment I will castle when I when it will be necessary to improve this rook from h8. So here of course it's just knight c3, but okay, let's let's go. I don't think I have something better. Of course I can just take on d1, but Maybe it's just too simple. How about no a4? Then maybe a3. Yes, can be annoying. Okay, how about cb3? Checking which pawn he gonna take. Since if a takes b3, now a4, and a takes b3 followed by queen a6 is coming, and of course I could take the rook, but. Who cares about the rook if there is such a tasty guy on a1? And it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna take this rook on the next move. Yeah, here it was, he resigned, but it was knight d1 already and then bishop c3. Or any other moves, like I think here, I think here black has something like 10 or 15 winning moves. Unless black blunders something, it still, it still was, <laughs> it was still winning. Yeah, maybe that game we could, we could have checked, since. There are a lot of games that still in play. But actually there was not much to check since uh, like if you saw any of my previous stream then you are quite familiar with this <laughs> opening lines and line and uh, with uh, the idea itself. So usually in case if white um, White is not prepared with like at least knowing some ideas with the engine, then uh, like and if he castled long, then like it's really uh, dangerous for White. So five five out of six, I feel like I play well. And the only lucky loser was uh, Firuja, who, by the way, lost, just lost a game, I think, maybe previously, but maybe now. He lost a game, and now he also has 5 out of 6. Yeah, that was set, not beating him. Otherwise, it would be already, like, in my collection, like, I would collect p uh, these players, like Caruana, Firuja, these guys from... Uh, title Tuesdays. Since uh, there is only one good thing about title at Tuesday, it's uh, that you have a possibility of playing against uh, strong guys. Uh, like sometimes we see here, like quite often we see here Nakamura um, and uh, some other guys, even Carlsen. And uh, the the weird thing that actually being twenty six plus uh, twenty six hundred plus, um, you don't play you don't play often against uh, these guys, like they play they own this uh, like this stupid Carlson tour or not only Carlson tour tournaments online. 
like round robin tournaments for only for these guys and that's it <clears throat> but the thing is that um, Actually, any player with 2600 or even like few guys with 2500 plus can beat uh, can beat them like, occasionally, like at least like yeah, once upon like, ten games maybe. <laughs> And the next one is Serenar. Okay, let's see. So what I need to do is to develop my pieces protecting the e3 pawn and then I can think what what next to do
Knight takes d5 doesn't work, unfortunately. Knight d5 still doesn't work. The only problem that he can play c5 and this is what he will play, otherwise it's just like knight g2, knight h4 and then it's really hard for him to protect the pawn. He's not even in time with bringing his knight to, um, to d6. Rook e1 or rook e2? Let's go with rook e1. So his idea is rook b5. Be a bit annoying, yes. So knight to five, no knight to five bet. This is the level, guys. So, I don't know why he decided to go for this line since I have played it uh, several times with black and I'm quite familiar with uh, the ideas. And here it's a tricky position, uh, like, uh, consistently worse for black and uh, uh, like here he could have played something like um, b6 so engine doesn't like b6 the knight b4 but at least here he had to play c5 i think 
c5. The engine also doesn't like c5, just rook b1. So at least somehow distracting me from the pawn on f5, while here it's just uh, went badly for him. is good well, but actually white is just slightly better here plus 0 0.6 knight e3 is a good move I did and here he had to play b5 knight e6 is already I think just lost knight g4 is good yes and here somehow convert in this position The only problem that there are actually something like 14 guys with 6 out of 7. There is Bortnik with 7 out of 7 and uh, something like, yeah, maybe something like 13 or 14 guys with 6 out of 7. And that's why I don't like to play these tournaments uh, since uh, like 400 450 players, of course, it's nothing uh, fair here. So, okay, now we play against Andrekin. If the guy want, wants to lose, then I don't mind. That would be funny if all this is kind of preparation, let's say. So 93 is a check. And he's not afraid of 97. This is just sort of something like incredibly complicated. Shit. How about b3? Could be a good move, possibly. 
Oh, yeah, like really a good move. And it was important to leave the knight on d5 for a moment. Aha, uh -huh, so you're afraid now. You're afraid now, boy. <laughs> That's the different story. Now we can talk. Still, still so complicated. Just incredible. Let's just take here. Play king where? D2 or E2? Let's go to D2. I still keep in mind knight c7 check. I don't know, seems just like uh, winning for me. Either I take his knight or his rook. Of course he will try to jump around, like um, creating some problems, like maybe e5 will be the move. No, e5 not the move. Uh, maybe he will play it on the next move. Let's just do a funny thing like rook e1. Блять! Пиздец, просто пиздец. I don't know how. What? What's? Uh, what's the problem with time? Like I, I'm, not, I'm not even in time to to make a move. I still have. Two seconds, just crushing him. Yeah, B three. I found a nice move. It took, uh, but it took me some time. Yeah, maybe better was just play knight. Whatever, ninety two or yeah. And here it should be like a direct 
direct win somehow maybe but okay yeah like I played what this was just completely winning yeah my plan was 98 and this is what I had to play but yeah here yeah, not much to talk about just completely winning so like second lucky loser for today still a lot of games in progress and also it will be like what I don't know how like how long but it will be a short break a uh, six minutes break I think But yeah, if with Firuja it was like, okay, it still was uh, play, just I, I had a, such a pleasant position and so on, but here it was uh, like completely winning. But this Tuesday I think I play better, I play stronger, and uh, my opponents, they suffer. So I just need to continue doing things like that and, uh, and preparing a bit for the World Rapid and Bleed Championship that will be held in, in December in, uh, yeah, in Kazakhstan. And some like it's still one and a half months. Yeah, one and a half months. So if I train a bit, maybe, then they will suffer. So 
So three rounds left and I have six out of eight. Not really great. But overall I would say a good tournament for me. If we forget about these uh, stupid losses. Hi Kai, how are you doing? Uh, Random Doom, I don't, I don't really care. Like I don't care at, at all. I would say. For me, um, just no difference. Nepo or Din. Maybe Nepo would be better for me since I have played a lot of. Uh, okay, not a lot of games against him, but at least something like. I guess maybe like OTB in classical chess, uh, maybe something like I don't know five games at the very least, and I I even um, like beat him once in classical chess. So um, what I mean is uh, like yeah against Dean Lejeune I played only at least. If I am not mistaken, I have played only two times in Blitz and lost both games. So it's not that it's not that pleasant. I'm fine, Kai. Also, like spoiling winning positions, that's a bit annoying. Otherwise play some strong and solid chess. or C5 where to go where do you go I miss you so let's go to C5 oh no Bishop C5 then maybe Bishop F4 B6 Knight D6 but no then I have also I have E5 there attacking his Bishop so I think should be okay oh that's a bit annoying, that's a bit annoying. I'm 
means that later he can go to e4 with another knight. So let's try to cover the d6 square, but this is already, yeah, this is what this bishop c5 was. Stupid move in this case if I move it back to e7 now, but what else to do? I should. And luckily after g4 this knight still has some squares to go. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a trouble. D5 is annoying for him where to move his bishop. D2, but then he cannot move his knight to D6. Ah, maybe he doesn't really want to do this. He can move knight C3, knight D5. So that's why let's start with bishop E6. First attack and his pawn on C4. And only now... Maybe still a6 not really necessary, since then knight d5 always will be a problem for me. So let's go for knight d4. I still, still, what a, what an annoying guy. Still wants to get to. A, but if I start with a6, then 94, yeah. <laughs> 94, 94, just bad. Queen d4 also doesn't seem to be good. So then I would say that my position is clearly worse. Clearly worse. Clearly worse, but not the end of the world. So, of course, uh, like I need. Also, another thing that I need to win this game since I have six out of eight and it's already like a limit of how many games I can lose in this tournament. There is one really annoying thing, cb5, ab5, and knight c7. Man, who do I play with? Who do, you, do I play with, yeah? So he cannot take on d4, then knight b3, and otherwise next move I take on c4 myself. I don't believe in any rook e6, bishop f6. And the game is over.
So the critical moment was The critical moment was then, actually, according to the engine, black is better. Don't really th feel like that. Yes, and here it was a critical moment. Like he could have played, actually, since the engine doesn't show it, then maybe it's not that good. Luckily I have this pawn, so if queen c2 then d3, uh, no, not d3, queen d6. And uh, only after bishop c6, d3. So, okay, then then it was no, like queen d3 was the best move, but nothing special. And here he is still, like, his position was okay, since bishop this, it's not clear why not bishop f4 here. So if knight c4, then maybe at least queen takes d4. Somewhere, uh, yeah, queen d4 is, was possible, but bishop d2 just, just losing the game. So seven, 7 out of 9 and uh, two, 2 rounds to go and I'm sharing from 8th place till 21st. while the lucky guy Andrejkin sharing the first place with Bortnik and Swan. At the moment I cannot uh, show you the tournament uh, standing since uh, like, it's not convenient for me uh, to switch between, like to switch to it uh, since I don't have a second screen. But it will change soon, like maybe already on the next week, I will receive my uh, second screen. Okay, so some Indian young guy. Let's learn, let's teach him how to play chess. Hopefully he will not teach me. Uh, what do I play here? Let me remember. Queen b6 is a mistake. Black had to play rook d8, but let me remember what's wrong. <laughs> what's wrong with uh, queen b6? Maybe maybe it's not really something wrong, but um, it was better for him to play rook d8 there. b5, then there is queen b2 maybe, so let's play rook f3, grabbing the, the pawn. Since if queen e3, then I don't want him to play, I don't want him to take the pawn on a3. Bishop f5, 
Bishop e6. Is he confident about this move? If I play, if I start with rook b5, for example. <laughs> What if next I play f5? Maybe it was better just to take the pawn on b7. B ah! So stupid. <laughs> yes, it was maybe it was better to take the pawn on b7. And what? Just lost? The problem that uh, queen h6 would be winning for me, but uh, there is queen e1 and queen take g3. How about queen g5 to start with? Nothing great, I think. Let's play. What a stupid move! Why not? Why not g8? Like since uh, anyway he takes and I get nothing here. Just lost, of course. Rook F3, everything was good. Rook E3 is fine, much better for me. Rook B5 was good and just just stupid move, just take the, this pawn and that's it. <sniffs> Rook b7 plus 1.6 for white, while f5 is just lost. <laughs> Such a stupid 
loss and uh, even so he was so so bad about converting what happened i don't understand uh, okay and he was so bad about converting this position since i mean f6 king f8 pfft. play g8 queen but it's the problem that I've, like it's still lost yeah still lost for for me but just yeah what to say such a stupid loss and now Andrekin has by the way Andrekin has 9 out of 10 so probably he gonna like a high chance of him winning the tournament after beating me in such a like lucky loser way so okay 7 out of 10 let's wait for the last round and uh, that's that will be over With 8 out of 10, I would still pretend for something. So it will be the last, uh, the last round and the, en the end of the stream. And see you, um, I think, on Friday. Yeah, Friday evening for me, Friday evening for Europe. I'm not going to participate in the late title of Tuesday since it will be uh, 2 a.m. for me, I believe. The last round.
I'm better by pawn structure, so that's why white needs uh, to like to push these pawns forward and to do it quite fast, like he did. Otherwise, he would be just worse. However, maybe here he also wars. Also here, bishop takes c6 is a critical move, and then taking the pawn on e5. Then at least I have a bishop pair there, and maybe bishop c6, rook takes c6, then rook c8, and grabbing the, the c4 pawn. But if he plays d5, then I just go for for knight a5. And there will be no way to protect the c4 pawn, only to sacrifice it by pushing c5. But also after d uh, after d5, uh, also knight b4 fine for me. So d5 is uh, like a bad move in terms of um, strategy, let's say, or positional chess. While in case if he takes on e5, then knight e5, and still the c4 pawn will be hanging. So let's see what which decision he he gonna make. Maybe I think I think it will be bishop takes e6. But actually, after bishop takes e6, I can even take with the bishop d5, then bishop e4 attacking the rook, then bishop d3 attacking the knight, and then bishop c4 <laughs> finally taking the, the pawn. But his rook on b3 there could be annoying. So it's now it's a hard question, hard question uh, and uh, like important one, which um, like which capture to go for. Oh my god, oh, what a nasty surprise I have for this guy. Ah, I thought he gonna take on e5. If he would take, then it's bishop e4, and if rook moves to b3, then rook takes c4 actually. So d5, yeah. Let's think then uh, what to do. Okay, I think just you know, maybe bishop a4 is also fine. Bishop b7 also good, so it's a hard question which one. Yeah, let's just play bishop b7. Oh, then it was better to play bishop a4 <laughs> if he goes like this. Wrong bet. Okay, now it's just about not losing on time. Maybe not just about that. Okay, let's try this one first. Oh, what a tricky guy.
shit, stupid check, Pfft, such a stupid loss, oh, that's incredible. Yeah, about this game, nothing to say at all, just such a lucky loser, uh, it's just incredible. Just here was... Yeah, here I blunder it, just bishop e4 or anything else. But here, yes, at some point it was like, okay, here was just <laughs> winning and yeah, play bishop c4, which I miss, but okay. And just like, okay, any any move. Bishop d5, rook c6. Yeah. Four games that I lost and four games that I lost stupidly. Like really, what to say? Against Firuja was a pleasant position, better for me. I outplayed him. Against Andrekin was like completely lost for him. I, okay, I, uh, like the the and Andrekin the first place. Uh, against that Indian guy, okay, just blunder, and this game was winning. So how much should I score? Mm, do, 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 at, at the very least, nine and a half. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. This is the end, and see you. Um, see you probably on Friday. Bye bye.